Hello, hello again, everybody. I am super excited, as I always am. I always say I'm super excited, but I am because I think these topics are powerful and important, and this is good information, you guys. This is information that I wish I had known at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, and I'm sharing it with you because I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. And today we're talking about a logo versus branding and how to save time and money by knowing which one you really need as an entrepreneur. And there's a lot of marketing out there that says like, you need this, you need that, you need this, you need that. And so I'm sharing some really honest thoughts that may not necessarily benefit me um, by being really honest with you guys about what, you, what I think you need. Um, and so I wanna just kind of jump right into it about logos and branding. That's what I do, that's what I'm about, that's what I know. Um, and I want to see you guys not waste your time and money and energy because most of us as entrepreneurs, like we're not graphic designers. We're not, um, brand strategists. That's not our skill set. Our skill set is usually something other than that. And we should really stay in that zone of genius. We should really stay in our strengths. So what is a logo? A logo is simply the visual representation of your brand and business right? We know this stuff intuitively. Intuitively, It's not rocket science. Um, a, um, and a brand is really the logo, which is the primary visual element of your brand, plus additional visual elements, plus clear messaging, right? So a brand is really more like three parts. Um, and, you know, you can hear people say like, oh, a brand isn't what you say about yourself. It's what other people say about you. Um, experience is part of that mix as well. But for our purposes, especially for online business owners, what we really need to know about and focus on is um, the, the logo, the visual, additional vi visual elements, and the messaging piece. And so knowing that simple information right there, again, if this is not rocket science, um, I'm going to make the case that you need a brand more than you need a logo. And you're like, Brittany, well, you just said a logo is part of a brand, right? But even though we live in a highly visual world and a logo is very important, um, out of all of the things that I've mentioned, experience, visuals, um, the, the messaging and the logo mark itself, colors, textures, all these different things, the thing that is the most important about your brand is your messaging. And people are like, well, that's not a visual thing. That's like, why does that matter? Well, the messaging informs the logo. The messaging informs the visual. The messaging informs the experience. The messaging even informs the brand voice, which is kind of like the tone with which you write your copy. Your copy is the words on your website or the words in your marketing materials. And so if you're thinking like, do I need a logo or do I need a brand? I always encourage clients to consider starting with the brand and making sure that the foundational elements are laid. And so um, a successful brand is a lot more, a whole lot more than just a pretty logo. And if you've been in business for any time at all, you know that to be very, very true. Good morning, Pamela. Yes. Um, and so this is um, something that I would encourage you to consider if someone is offering to do a logo for $50, um, they're probably, and I'm saying probably for a specific reason, and I'll get to that in a second, they're probably not thinking about your overall brand. When I was first getting into design and I was self-taught, I did my first logo for $50 and I found out it was really, really hard when the client did not know who they were talking to, when they didn't have a very clear message, they didn't have a very clear mission, and I, I didn't know how to encapsulate who they were in a logo mark. And so when you have those foundational pieces in place, you can work with a, a designer, um, someone like me, someone who is you know, not me. You need to find somebody who you connect with, you can, who you can communicate clearly with. Whew, that was a hard sentence to get out. Um, but, you know, I say probably because I did. I took the time to continue digging and exploring and find answers to those things 
Um, but I thought a logo initially was like, oh, I have a general idea of who they are and what they do. I think I can put something together for them. Man, and it depends on who your designer is. If they really are getting started and this is what they want to do, then sure, consider going with someone who's $50, right? But I would encourage you to consider like evaluating how are they approaching this? Is this just a random vector or is it just letters to them? Are they just trying to make a quick 50 bucks? Or is, are they invested in your business and your business's success as much as you are? And if they're not, I would say, keep looking. Keep looking for someone who is going to be the right fit for your business. Um, right now, I only offer really a signature package for most of my design clients, unless I can determine like they've been in business for a while, they pretty much know what they're doing, um, they are clear on who they are and who they serve. And if that's the case, then I will do logos for my clients, um, just the logos, because we already have those foundational pieces in place. And if that's you, then I would say definitely, if you have those foundational pieces in place, then go for just the logo. But if you're just getting started, I would encourage you, if you're really going to take yourself seriously as an entrepreneur, if you're really going to make this happen this year, you're going to hit your financial goal, you're going to hit your impact goals, your list growth goals, your visibility goals, like if you're really going to be serious about what you're doing and build an online business, then I would encourage you to invest in a brand package of some sort with somebody who feels good to you, whose portfolio is um, represents well the style that you would like to go with. And that's because you know that they can do what you're asking. Um, I see a lot of time in the design industry, like someone just asked me this morning, hey, can you do this kind of Photoshopping um, for this picture? And I was like, that is not my style of Photoshop. That is really comprehensive. Um, and that goes beyond my scope of ability and you'll need to look elsewhere, right? It's totally okay to reach out and say, hey, can you do this? Is this within your scope of ability? But generally if someone's portfolio is going to reveal what um, their, their focus is, their style is, their skill sets, those kinds of things. Um, and so I just want you to know that when you come across designers or brand strategists and you're like, whoa, that is a steep price for some pretty pictures. I want to ask you a question. I really just want to leave you with this thought. Oh man. And this is such a hard question for people to hear, right? How much is the Nike swoosh worth, right? That little check mark. That's it. That's all that it was. It probably, you know, in your mind took five minutes to create, but how much is that worth? Um, Chip and Joanna Gaines, they have a brand called Magnolia, right? It's on everything that they do. They have real estate and um, shops and all kinds of different little sub-businesses under the Magnolia brand. Um, how much is that brand worth? It's just a tree, right? Just a tree. Um, how about Chick-fil-A, right? Um, these brands are probably worth millions of dollars and probably more. Um, and they didn't just go with a $50 logo. Um, and so I want you to think about that as you think about your business and your brand, how much is your brand really worth? Um, how much would you value your services at and what you can do for your clients? Because when you think about it, um, you really start to see this as an investment and you'll also know like it doesn't pay to be scattered. It pays to be focused. And when you're able to bring that focus into an encapsulated logo mark, that is really powerful. And it's going to force you to stay consistent and not be super scattered and focused, um, or I guess distracted by shiny object syndrome and doing all the things for all the people, because that is not going to get you as much profitability. It might get you a little for a little while, but it's going to be exhausting. It's not sustainable and it's just not a great long-term strategy. And so I know a lot of you feel um, like, man, some of these investments in myself, in my business, whether that's coaching or branding, um, professional, personal branded photos, um, these are steep investments for quality work. And you can see the difference between quality work and a $50 or even a Fiverr logo, right? Um, so I've, I've heard you guys, I've also listened to my clients, and I know that a lot of you are needing some starter tools for getting a brand going that you can grow into. And I'm 
been conducting market research interviews, literally sitting down for 30 minutes at a time, interviewing folks who are saying, I've got this vision, I've been taking action, but I haven't been able to be consistent in my visuals and I'm really struggling to figure out my brand because I try this one on and it feels like a big coat or I try this one on and it feels too constricting. So I am working on something, a couple somethings actually behind the scenes here to be an affordable alternative for those of you who are just getting started in your online business so that um, it can be an alternative to working with a designer. Um, it will prepare you for working with a designer or a brand strategist um, to help you, one, interview them well and know exactly what you're looking for in a designer so that your experience is really positive. And two, um, it, it could be something that you continue to maintain on your own for a little while until you start to see those numbers come in. And I want you to know that, um, you know, if, if this is something, an area where you're, you're working through it right now, I do have a good number of other resources available. I've dropped two into the description here and I will drop them elsewhere. Um, so you can click on them and just snag those. One is the ideal client workbook. That's part of your brand messaging. Um, in order to develop your messaging, you need to know who you're talking to. So I've got the ideal client workbook there available for you and the visual branding workbook. And that is also to kind of help you figure out what visuals best represent me, especially as a personal brand online. There's different things to consider if you're a bigger business um, or you're running more of a corporation style organization, but for personal branding, um, which a lot of wedding photographers and coaches and consultants and online people like designers, um, they need to be able to brand themselves. And so that's what that workbook is for. You can snag those right over here in the description. And um, if you are interested in learning more about the affordable, affordable alternative to working with um, a designer, I would love for you to drop um, some kind of emoji, letting me know you're excited about that or that's something that you're interested in. That way I can kind of know um, what you guys are really wanting and needing support around because I've, I hear you saying like, man, this is steep, man, this is an investment, man, this is an obstacle to me moving forward in my business. And I really need support to get over this place. Diaz says like, yes, this is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Um, and Lori says, this is the year, right? So like, there's a lot of you out there saying like, I need this to happen like yesterday. I need it to happen yesterday, but this is an obstacle I'm struggling to get over. And I don't want to see you guys spinning your wheels here when there are alternatives and solutions for you to get momentum. And a lot of times it starts with you working through these pieces before you go to a designer a year from now when you're making six figures in your business and you say like, please make this better than what I did. Okay. So I wanted to leave that with you this morning. The biggest difference between a logo versus branding. Um, a logo is really smart if you already have these other brand foundational pieces in place. But if you don't, you need to start at the beginning, understanding who you're talking to, your messaging, and then build from there because everything else will be informed by clarity around those pieces. All right, guys, drop your thoughts and comments below about anything that I've shared with you today, um, but particularly on, you know, investing in a logo versus branding. Um, and what do you guys think about me saying like, this is an investment and maybe you shouldn't go with a $50 logo person unless you know like they're they're willing to consider your brand, the scope of your brand in mind. I really want to hear your guys' thoughts. I'd love to dialogue over this with you because I know it's kind of a, a sensitive topic because it's a matter of, of money. It's an investment, right? It's a sacrifice to make sure that this is good and it may or may not be profitable for you if you don't do it right. So I want to make sure that this is helpful for you guys. Let me know what you're thinking and I can't wait to chat with you next week. We're going to dive deeper into brand messaging so you can know exactly what you need to be thinking through so that you can connect with your ideal client. So if you haven't figured out who you're talking to, make sure you download that workbook and work through that because you wanna, you're gonna wanna have clarity around that for next week. That's it for today, guys. I'm for you guys, you can do this and I will see you guys later, bye.